everyone. Welcome to Dr. D's show. I am Dr. Deepika Krishnan and thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today. I want to make sure that you are hearing us clear and well. Send us your answers below and let me know if there is anything we could do for you. Okay, so this question is for everyone. Have you ever felt butterflies in your stomach, especially when uh, you are nervous? Uh, you know that when you get the signals from an unexpected source and that is your second brain. The second brain which is hidden in the walls of the digestive system, what we can also call brain in your gut, changes the gut microbiome and inflammation in the gut can affect the brain and uh, causes symptoms like um, anxiety or depression. Our gut-brain axis is also connected through the immune system. The gut and the gut microbiomes play an important role in our immune system and the inflammation in the body by controlling what is passed in the body and what is excreted. Research has shown that marine collagen is beneficial for our gut and uh, for our immune system. Glutamine, one of the amino acids in marine collagen, helps preventing inflammation of the gut by uh, healing the leaky gut syndrome. Glycine and proline, the two main amino acids in marine collagen, may help heal the stomach lining and prevent stress-induced ulcers through the positive impact of uh, uh, central nervous system. Scientists have found that marine collagen shows promising results in healing your intestinal tissue, your joint, muscle, hair, skin, and so on. To get the maximum benefits of a marine collagen, I would recommend 12 grams to two spoons of marine collagen added to your tea, water, smoothie, soup, anything. And for more information, please visit www.immunosciences.it. Today in the show of Dr. Dees, we would understand the link between digestion, mood, health, and even the way you think. So make sure you listen to the episode till the end because there is a lot to learn. We have a very special guest, Dr. Stephanie. We will be discussing about gut inflammation and mental health. Dr. Stephanie follows an integrative approach when treating her patients, utilizing a number of techniques. Dr. Stephanie works mostly with elite athletes, using her training as a chiropractor and soft tissue specialist. She also uses comprehensive and functional medicine testing, combined with therapeutic doses of supplements and specific diet. So without any delay, let us say a big hi to Dr. Stephanie. Hello, Dr. Stephanie. Hi, thanks so much for having me on here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I mean, it is a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, you know, you have uh, treated patients from all around the world and you know, such wonderful, famous athletes are under your know, treatment. How did you get into, you know, becoming such fabulous and why did you choose this uh, chiropractic and functional medicine together? Yeah, so I ended up in functional medicine from my own health history. So I actually was at the end of my chiropractic college and then I got pretty sick and, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to actually do that manual treatment because I was having a lot of mental health issues, which came on as like very serious, like panic attacks. And, you know, it was paired with a lot of other symptoms like nervous system issues. And my body went almost paralyzed on one side. Like I, I was having a lot of symptoms that was no one was tying together and and it kind of just guided me into functional medicine so you know i was already i graduated and i started working with these athletes um in a manual setting as i was working on you know fixing my health because i had severe gut issues that that's how i kind of um brought the two together then i found functional medicine because i was tentatively diagnosed with and then that was just the path that i went down and, I, and started applying the stuff i did for sick people 
on these healthy people to help them actually perform better. You know, that's so interesting that how we discover so many wonderful uh, things on our way. In fact, I discover functional medicine in a similar way, you know, when I was going through something and suddenly I come across this functional medicine and now it is a part of our company. Dr. Stephanie, the gut and the brain are the prime examples of uh, how, you know, how one can affect other. Uh, an imbalanced gut is associated with many diseases, including mood disorders like depression, Will you please shed some light on, you know, how the gut affects our mood? Yeah, the vagus nerve is one of those direct connections. So, you know, you can actually see the connection. It's a nerve that starts at the brain stem and it goes down. There's a strong gut connection with it. And so um, 80% of the information from the gut is going up to the brain because that's how it how important that information is that the body is getting from the gut and then it the brain takes action based on the information it's getting from there and only 20 percent is from the brain to the actual gut so we can see how much the gut is influencing the brain just based on that connection with that vagus nerve there's there's different things that can happen first of all if there's any overgrowths in the gut or certain bacteria or infections, or even sometimes that bacteria can actually travel up the vagus nerve. It's like a bi-directional highway. And sometimes it can bypass our blood brain barrier, which is really meant to protect our brain from stuff getting in that's not supposed to. So, you know, that's one of the direct connections. There's two branches to our vagus nerve. So one's the anterior or the one that comes off the front of the brainstem. And then there's the posterior or the ones that comes off behind the front one. And so what we're seeing is first based on infections or whatever stressors are on our body, it's not always infections. Um, you know, we're getting into our sympathetic nervous system. So when we're too much in our sympathetic, that's when we're feeling anxiety, stress, overwhelmed, all of that kind of thing. But once it goes on for too long, then we're more shut off based on epigenetics, inflammation, based on family history. Some people are more prone to depression or prone to anxiety. And you know, what's their, what do they have in common, but their environment, which foods do they eat, which microbiome they inherit. And then the way that their microbiome builds based on, you know, family practices, family trauma, all of that, you know, mental disease becomes like very common amongst families, but turning on your vagus nerve, which we teach a lot of people like different ways to turn on your vagus nerve, that also can help your gut immune system and, you know, help people be less depressed, less anxious, whatever their problem is. But there's like a very, very close connection between the gut and the brain. The gut is like our headquarters and, you know, every other microbiome in our body is all influenced by our gut microbiome. So it's like the headquarters, like, you know, CIA has a headquarters and then it has all these other little offices. It is the main hub in my, in my opinion. So uh, Dr. Sunny, what, what should one do? Because you, um, you did mention that sometimes uh, the depression, which is, you know, uh, cause of what you eat and, you know, what happens in your gut and it can be hereditary as well. So what can one do if uh, there is some kind of uh, mental illness in the family uh, you know, going on, what, what things, what changes can one do? Yeah. So in, again, you know, I know there's controversy always with diet, but in my personal experience and the experience of a lot of my practice more organic foods, because, you know, these processed, uh, uh, carbohydrates like bread, pasta, like even like, you know, too much of certain grains, they feed overgrowths, like you know, we treat a lot of parasites, not necessarily always acute, sometimes they can be chronic. And so, you know, we want to do a good amount of protein, and then, you know, healthy fats, and less of those kind of carbohydrates for fixing the gut, in my opinion, but also having all different types of, of plant fibers that are like prebiotics or soluble fiber, like there's a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of things that go on in the gut give us the ability to absorb nutrients from our actual food, right? Food wise, you know, uh, that's usually where we go, but we, we want you to have like a lot of different prebiotic fibers if you can handle them. But sometimes we've really got to starve everything out and we're even waiting a little bit, depending on how damaged the gut is. 
Yeah. So uh, you mean, you know, things like intermittent fasting and all, you know, giving the gut a rest, does it help? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, and intermittent fasting as well. It was one of the biggest things that helped me when my, and my gut was like a disaster. I couldn't handle a lot of foods. So we are going to speak about intermittent fasting, you know, towards the later of the program. But uh, connecting with this, I totally agree that how, you know, uh, process carbohydrate and things, because, you know, uh, in our regular life, we also have experience, you know, when we stuff off too much of uh, carbohydrates, and then suddenly we are sleepy and drowsy. In fact, uh, there is a very interesting study about microbiomes, which say that the microbiomes, when they digest the uh, processed carbohydrates and the milk, they release some kind of of uh, the chemicals which is almost similar like the effect of alcohol you know mm -hmm. so that's that's why you, we if we drink too much of milk or if you have too much of processed carbs suddenly we are feeling lazy and so i, I really love that study that how uh, microbiomes um, in our gut which are tiny uh, our pets you know that's what i call uh, my patient that they are our pet which are in our body and they are feeding what what we are giving them so if you give them good they will be good bacteria if you give them bad they will be bad bacteria so yeah, I, I just love the study and the way uh, you have explained that how things are connected and how, you know, food uh, creates such such a strong impact. Uh, so inside our bellies, we have extensive intestinal lining covering more than 4,000 square feet of surface area. When working properly, it forms a tight barrier that controls what gets absorbed into our bloodstream and whatnot. But an unhealthy gut lining may trigger the inflammation that could lead problems within the digestive tract. And so Dr. Stephanie, would you like to, you know, tell our uh, viewers, our listeners about the leaky gut and the gluten intolerant thing? Because um, I think, you know, day by day, a lot of people are getting gluten intolerant. What is the reason of that and why these things are happening? Yeah. So when I explain leaky gut to my patients, I kind of explain the gut, an oversimplified explanation of the gut. So a tube starting from your mouth, ending at your anus, where you poop it all out. And it's a single cell layer. The cells are like very tightly packed and they're very selective of what can get through because right behind that single layer of our cells is our access to our bloodstream. So it's meant to be very protective, very selective. And what we have are certain foods certain trauma, like gluten, which you said, like alcohol, like certain medications, um, you know, liver problems that can lead to disruption and we lose that selectiveness. So obviously when there's that barrier disruption, your body and your bloodstream has a lot more to deal with. It's having more of an immune response against undigested food, maybe some bacteria, maybe some other toxins that get through into our tube that I was talking about for years. This was very unaccepted um, explanation of what was going on in the body, but now we know that it's a, it's a real thing. Tell based on certain symptoms, lots of skin issues, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, there's joint pain. So now it's kicked out and it's in the interstitium, which means like in your skin in between cells, right? And it's giving off chemicals like come clear me out. Like I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. And so it causes tightness in the joints, pain. If it gets to your skin, it's causing rashes, eczema. So we know there's a big connection between a leaky gut barrier and a leaky brain barrier because it's yeah. the same chemicals that, you know, disrupt those barriers, so not having enough nutrients and not enough stomach acid and, and all of these things. But, you know, we also need to fill in the gaps and help give the fuel to that stomach line or gut lining that actually helps heal it. And you're, there's a lot of that. We're still learning about gut and gut health and, um, leaky gut and everything, but you know, all of these, these, um, things that we do know that we can go after are having huge, huge, giving huge relief for people from multiple symptoms and even systemic disease. In fact, uh, uh, leaky gut, which is an autoimmune disease, you have explained that how uh, our body, uh, you know, tries to protect uh, the thing. What about intermittent? Let's, you know, please give us more information about intermittent fasting, because again, you know, some do it rightly, some do it, you know, different ways. And I also know people who fast for 16 hours and then 
have their pizza and burgers <laughs> so uh, what is the right way and uh, how it helps our gut yeah so you know eating and digesting food is an inflammatory process i had severe diarrhea and it was one of the practices that helped my gut to start healing um and you know when i'm working with males you can push it a little bit more with them so say your last meal is at seven or six and you have like you know a few hours before you go to bed that's healthy and then the, the next day they're eating like 18 hours after so you know 12 hours is going to be 7 a.m so you just add the next few hours um but you just can't have any protein or fat or or actually you can have fat in the morning sorry you should be able to go 12 hours from bedtime to the next morning eating and then we can push it forward from there so um so men I'll let, I'll let go to 18 hours females you know it seems like it affects their blood sugar hormones a little bit more so we're not going to push as much like i can fast now and i used to be the person that had to eat every three hours or i was like shaky i the sweatiness almost going to faint and now i cannot eat for days and it was like I said, one of the biggest things that helped my stomach to heal. And then, you know, when you break your fast, you're breaking it with like protein and fat and, you know, those kind of things, not, you don't want to turn on your insulin and have like, like you said, pizza and, and whatever other <laughs> pasta or something like that. So that's how we go about it. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, very interesting, you know, uh, uh, having the right knowledge of intermittent uh, fasting and, you know, taking some guidance uh, from, you know, doctors like you or any other functional medicine doctor. Dr. Stephanie, I, you know, uh, we had a lot of questions. In fact, there are some questions popping up uh, asking about that, how one should stop eating uh, emotional eating, which is a big thing. And since we are talking about brain and gut barrier and how uh, particularly with females you know we have we do so much of emotional eating when we are upset we eat when we are happy we eat um you know when we have our periods then we eat so and then we just go and eat anything so mm -hmm. how what do you recommend your patient how will you make our listeners understand that what happens and how to control that yeah so i mean a lot of people who are emotional eaters go for it more for comfort and if you're going for comfort food you're going for that either like Carbohydrate, heavy carbohydrate and fat kind of mixed together. So it's a soothing thing, right? We we're we're still like self soothing, like little babies when they're sucking their thumb, right? We just use alcohol or foods, whatever it is for the person. So I mean, I get people to find practices that are soothing otherwise, right? I don't like people snacking a lot. So anything, I have a whole list of vagal nerve exercises or meditations or even just different like. Uh, finding like a drink that's comforting that maybe has a little bit of fat in it, stuff like that. That's, that's how I go about it. And it just helps to soothe you that way. So I just try and coach people on different ways to self soothe essentially. Okay. So we have a question here. What's the best food to eat during PMS that doesn't harm your body? you know, crazy hunger pangs. I don't know if they're, if they like avocado or some, you know, avocado with some little bit of salt and pepper, like that could be soothing and it's healthy fats. It's anti-inflammatory. Yeah. That's one of the things that comes to mind. Wait, do you have any? I think, you know, again, avocado is a very good source and, you know, having a bowl of soaked almonds, uh, pumpkin seeds, what we want, that good fat, it will give you filling and it will also, you know, soothe your hunger pangs. And I think the satisfactory taste, which you want, uh, these fat, they provide you very effectively. Yeah. And you spoke about, you know, turmeric latte, which is, uh, you know, again, very popular in India, which is mm -hmm. milk you add it with turmeric. And we have some homegrown spices, sorry, home spices like cinnamon, um, you know, mm -hmm. pepper, add those things. If you want a bit of sweetness, add some honey. But I think, yeah, it, it suits. I mean, just it's a kind of a practice, a kind of a lifestyle, which you have to do it. So if you are having hunger pangs and getting, you know, crazy uh, cravings to so have a cup of that and turmeric latte are quite effective in controlling your, you know, giving relax to your gut and the hunger uh, cravings. What do you say? I agree with that completely. Doctor, uh, 
uh, Stephanie, you were constantly speaking about the vagus nerve and you know how uh, you train your patients to uh, balance your vagus nerve. Would you give want to give some insight to our listeners here? Uh, although I do know that you know it's a separate course of yours and you have they have to come under you to get the but just a uh, you know hint or just a thing which they can uh, practice at home you know to enhance their vagus nerve uh, you know and to make it more healthier. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have a lot of at home ones and some of them are simpler. Some of them are more comfortable or uncomfortable. For instance, like a cold shower at the end of your shower for maybe even just a few minutes to start, you let the cold water run in it. It's important that it hits over your neck and collarbone to kind of your vagus nerve runs from here and it goes down and behind, and then it goes and innervates your, your um, nervous system. Um, and then, you know, there's, a technique I came up with with a toothpick where I just have people have a toothpick and your, your vagus nerve is superficial over your ear here and in behind your ear. So you can tap your, those spots with a toothpick tapping all of these spots and it helped me calm down and actually calm down my gut too. So that's one that I find really powerful. And we've actually had people stop their seizures before they came on by activating their vagus nerve with a toothpick. Um, other things is facial expression. So like puffing your cheeks, sticking out your tongue and putting it one side to the other with your eyes, looking all the way, one way, holding it for 15 seconds, coming back to center and looking all the way there. Um, humming, gargling, and gagging. So if you don't like fish oils are, are one thing that turns on the vagus nerve, right? Also, oh, hand massage, like getting someone to massage your hands, mm -hmm. um, scalp so massage, foot massage, all of those, like, and getting pressure points in there help turn on your vagus nerve. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, meditation, yoga help as well. So those, but the powerful ones, and even if you're sleeping and you can't sleep or something, or your mind's going, you can always try, even with your eyes closed to just bring your eye first, all the way to the right, hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. You'll feel yourself kind of sigh and release a bit. And then you go to the other side. And if it doesn't work right the first time, then you do it again. It will help. I've used that numerous times to help myself go to sleep when I was going through a stressor or, or my body was under stress or whatever was going on. Um, so it's one that's pretty accessible. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. In fact, you know, girls, now you know that, you know, going for a hand massage or a scalp massage is not only uh, treating yourself, but you're also healing yourself. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's, oh. this would be the last question probably because, you know, we are running out of time and this question is really interesting, which I also want to know. Uh, diets like keto diets are good for health for a longer term. I had a personal experience with this and I see this, I did keto and I think I hit a wall. It was so good at first. I think that those diets are meant for healing. I think having that as kind of like your basis and not overeating carbohydrates and not, you know, I, I, I look more for balance now. I, if you talked to me years ago, I would have been like, yes, you know, but you have to learn from experiences and you have to see that like, it's not one size fits all because it doesn't work. It's not a great diet for everyone. And there's a lot of things to even consider. I'm so glad you spoke about that because, you know, things like these are quite, uh, um, that people are unaware about the complete knowledge of that, which is disrupting the gut health. I'm glad you spoke about specific that how uh, this is a therapy, therapy and, you know, one should take it for a longer duration as a therapeutic procedure only. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Stephanie, and thank you for your time. And it was a great session. Hope uh, to see you again in the coming episode because there are a lot of questions we need to answer. Thank you so much. And very sorry if you uh, we are not able to answer all your questions, but uh, we'll try to get Dr. Sydney again and uh, learn more about uh, these things in detail. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. And thank you so much, Dr. Sydney. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye.
So for any kind of more info, please visit www.immunosciences.in or uh, you can connect with, you can drop a message or, you know, connect with our team anytime. And if you want any more questions, uh, feel free to reach us and we'll make sure we answer all your questions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.